Aloha everyone, Michelle Melendez of Blossom Inner Wellness and I'm super excited because I'm interviewing today Lavana Loma from Kauai and Aloha Lavana, it's so amazing to have you on. Hey Michelle, thanks for having me, glad to be here, appreciate it. So Lavana is, um, well I'm going to actually have you share your story because it's an amazing story and what this video is about, it's about how to know how to stand up for your freedoms how to first know what they are. Uh, mm. A lot of people don't even know that they have certain freedoms that are um, right now uh, being uh, kind of ignored. And um, so we're going to talk about that. But Lavana, first, uh, the first thing I want you to share is who you are and how did you get started with what, what was your idea when all of this happened? What were you thinking? Like what, what was going through your head? Okay. Yes. Well, thank you, Michelle, for the opportunity. I am, uh, you know, definitely, always uh, excited and willing and able and uh, wanting to help people as much as possible to kind of to understand what's really going on today to understand the assault on our liberties and what we can do to fight back and so um so basically um i started out by um whenever all of this covid you know lockdown began and they told us that we had to stay in our homes um you know i knew i knew right away that um that this was an infringement on on our first amendment rights that we have a right you know to to well first of all we have rights to freely move about we have um you know we have rights to peaceably assemble and we have a right to petition our government for a redress of grievance and that also means filing lawsuits and so early on you know um i knew that uh, i knew that something was not right about what was happening and that you know we can't just have our constitutional god-given rights thrown to the wayside because there's a so-called emergency and um so i connected with some people on social media and we decided well we got to get out there and protest you know and so we were really, um, you know, looked down upon, unfortunately, by a lot of people in the community when we did that. But we, uh, but we got out there and we brought signs and we made a ruckus and we said, no, we're not going to just, you know, take this. And from there, it evolved into um, knowing that, uh, you know, that that it just it just uh, was not right that our government would have such authority and such power to tell people that they don't get to go to work and they don't get to earn a living to feed their family and then we don't get to do this and do that and you have to wear a mask no matter what we knew that we had to bring legal action we knew it was something that was going to have to be taken care of in the court of law and so in order to start you know uh, raising funds to bring a lawsuit we decided to create a nonprofit organization so we created for our rights and um there was you know some people in the beginning that were with us that were really instrumental in helping to create that and get it started and i totally am so grateful to them and you guys know who you are they're they they since kind of moved on from our from our you know our efforts but that's okay and uh you know we are still pushing forward um on this journey um to bring legal action and honestly i feel like um you know that's one of the most important things but at the same time even beyond that is you know just for people to know what their rights are and be able to hold that space of personal authority because they know who they are they know they're a child of god and understanding that our entire system of uh you know the 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 laws in america you know they're based on this declaration of independence that our forefathers wrote where we laid out that we are not going to you know we are not going to live under tyranny that we are a free country because we are you know endowed with uh, unalienable rights that are granted to us by our creator and that is what makes this country different you know is that we know our rights are from from God and that, that we, you know, not from government. And um, so it's really like, it's really, really important, you know, especially where we're at right now, it just keeps getting worse every single day um, that, you know, that, that, that ultimately standing up and refusing to comply with this tyranny is like, like the most important thing that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, yeah, so basically, um, you know, that starts my journey. And then, of course, along the way, you know, that's uh, uh, I found myself in quite a number of situations where I have had to, you know, to resist. And actually, it's been an everyday thing for me. I've, you know, I've refused. I know just like you too, Michelle, like refused to wear the mask and knowing that, you know, this is my body 
and um, you know that I have a God-given right to breathe oxygen freely, and you know that that is um, a strongly held religious belief, and it's a strongly held conviction that you know that I should have authority over how I how I um, protect my own health, and that the government doesn't get that right to tell you you have to wear something to protect your health. No. You know, it's crazy. So. So it's every day it's a battle because, you know, we live in a world now where if you have, if you go into an establishment with a face, you know, you're, there's a very good chance you're going to be harassed and, and discriminated against. And it's, it's, it's difficult. It's a very difficult thing to do, but um, you know, but I encourage people to be brave and to do it. And that the more that you do, the more you start to own that power, yeah. you start to come into that. Yeah. yeah. And I know for you, you've, you've been doing that for a while too. And, and you understand yeah. what I mean, how it gets easier. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It does. And, and that's the first thing that you, that, that needs to be happening are aware of right now is the sovereignty is the knowingness that you have a right to not put something on your face that you don't want to put on your face. Nobody is controlling you. So um, I, it also is getting easier for us to do that. Like I've gone into many establishments without a mask, um, and the first thing I do, because it does take something to do that, is I pray. I literally go, I am the light, I am the love, I am the truth, God, I give this to you. I know that uh, you gave me a, a nose and a mouth to breathe fresh air, and that is my choice, and that's what I'm going to do. I go in with Aloha, went into Lowe's, no problem, went into uh, Choice Mart was an issue, uh, and then, you know, I, was, I, was, I got all the way through the whole store. Uh, you know, I was praying the whole time. I was actually talking to some customers, smiling at people. And um, nobody said anything to me until I got to the cash register. Then the lady said, oh, you need a mask. I said, I'm medically exempt. Three mm -hmm. different clerks kept asking me that. Finally, I was checking out. And because one of them was, the final, another third one said, you need a mask. I said, no, I'm medically exempt, spiritually exempt, emotionally exempt, religiously exempt. Mm -hmm. and, you're, and I said, and you're causing me anxiety right now. I'm here in Aloha and I was just breathing yep. and then she left and she went to get her manager. Well, I'm about to check out. The manager comes in where our policy is, she stops the whole transaction. Our policy is you have to wear a mask. And I said, I'm not killing anybody standing here as a healthy person breathing fresh air. I said, and if you had just let me finish the transaction, I'd be gone by now. And so she said, I'm sorry, it's our policy. You can't, you cannot shop. We cannot complete this transaction unless you put a shield or a mask on. And I said, I want to talk to your change maker. I said, who mm -hmm. is the person in charge of making decisions? And so she brought down a woman came from uh, the shopping, the shopping center. It's a very small shopping center. And she came down and she said, um, you know, I agree with you more than you know, but we have a policy and we could be fined. And I said, no, you can't. I said, even the Hilo police department said you cannot be fined. They're there that not, not you cannot be fined, but they're not going into businesses checking yeah and there's also an um, there's also an exemption exempt mm -hmm. exhibit j mm -hmm. in the emergency proclamation says medically exempt are requ are requested to wear a shield but it doesn't say you have to mm -hmm. and i told her i said she said would you wear a shield and i said no i said i'm not going to put anything on my face that dishonors the millions of men and women who have fought and died for our freedoms awesome. i won't do it and I said, um, she said, would you come at a different time? And I said, I can, I can come at a different time. And she also let me into the store, back into the store, because we were outside. She had, she said, she's medically exempt to the clerk, gave me a bag, and I was able to check out. So it's, it's like, what, what needs to happen right now? And what is happening is more and more people are making the choice to stand up for their sovereign rights. And sisters and brothers who are watching this, it does take some courage but trust in god and trust in the knowingness that you are here for a reason it's not a mistake and it's not a mistake of the people that you um enter in, in in engage with at that time everybody is is here for it's like why do you certain people show up in your life and why are there certain people that you run into something is happening with each and every um interaction so um, what I want this, this call to be, this interview to be with Lavana is more of kind of somebody was asking for a cheat sheet of how, how do they do this? How do they go to 
the um, airport. She went into the whole airport. She traveled from Kauai to Oahu without a mask. And we're gonna, she's gonna explain how she did that. Um, also, no quarantine, no COVID testing. So this is possible. And the first thing to do as a, as a cheat sheet is to know that you are a child of God. You have a sovereign right to breathe fresh air. Go into establishments and just try and mm -hmm. just try it and tell them I'm a, so I'm a sovereign being. Like just one more story real quick. I was at Costco and this was when they first started the you have to wear a mask thing and three of the clerks were right there. And uh, she said, oh, you need a mask. And I said, no, I said, this is America and I'm an American citizen, even though this is in America, but that's a whole different story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I said, this is not China. This is not a communist country and I have a right to breathe fresh air. And they, all three of them, she, they didn't say words. She just said, let her, let her pump. She just said, let her pump. Why? Because I made a stand. I was very clear about my choice and, she, and, it, and that was it. So it was like, if you are clear about your choice and you're kind, you don't yell, you don't be disrespectful, you know, that's going to make a statement in itself. Um, so that's one of the first cheat sheets is just to know you are a sovereign being of God and just try it. Go yeah. in and try it. Um, so, Lavana, I want to talk about you going maskless. Right. Uh, and I know we're jumping ahead because we're, we're going to go back to the, the first one where the quarantine happened. But this was huge. Like, you yeah. literally sent yeah. us all a picture of yourself on the airplane with no mask. I know, right? Okay. So, let's, yeah, let's dive right into that. So, first things first, I just want to say that the First Amendment of our Constitution, it's the First Amendment for a reason, and that is the protection of our religious rights, um, you know, and freedom of speech, of course, as well. And it's so, so important for people to remember that, like you said, this is America, and that is one of the most highly protected rights, is that we, if, you know, if we hold a strong religious conviction and, and something violates that religious conviction, whether it be, you know, wearing a mask or getting a test or taking a vaccine, you know, that, that we have a right, we have a right to stand, you know, in that and to, to own that and um, that it cannot, you know, we cannot be discriminated against. So, um, so as far as for me, you know, traveling without the mask, um, I, honestly, the, the ultimate thing around that is, is the fact that um, I decided to come into a place of just like, I am going to do this. I have every right to do this. I'm not doing anything wrong. I am going to trust that this is, you know, the, this is okay for me to go here. I'm going to be brave about it. And that is really where the, where, where the most important thing in all of it, because prior to this trip, um, I actually had it set in my mind that the that flying on an airplane was the one situation where I wasn't going to be able to get away with not wearing a mask. And because I told myself that, I, I, I decided that that was true and that was the case, you know, and I allowed these other people, these people to tell me that that was true, that I don't have that right to travel without a mask. But once I made up in my own mind that I was going to do this no matter what, you know, that was like, you come into that place of confidence. And it's amazing because I really truly feel that that was the difference was that the way that I presented myself to them was a place of like, I'm not doing anything wrong. I have every right to not be wearing a mask and I'm, that's all there is to it. And so, um, you know, I, and so basically on the trip to Oahu, when I got to the um, TSA, I, you know, I approached them head held high, not wearing a mask. And she asked me, you know, where's your mask? And I told her, oh, I have a medical exemption. So I have these medical exemption uh, lanyard cards that I sell on my website. And I was using that card to show them. And, um, and I told him, you know, I already cleared it with, uh, with the airlines, which I actually did send a letter to them. And I never did get a response. But the last time, the last time that I did try to travel, that's what I did was um, I sent them my medical exemption letter that I did get from a doctor and that it's helpful to have this it is I will say that it is helpful to have it, um, but it's not entirely necessary because our medical information is private no matter what. And so essentially you really don't, they have no authority to even ask you to prove, you know, your medical exemption. All you have to do is say that you do have it. Um, and so 
I was able to, to get through the TSA with, you know, with the medical exemption card. And I, I think part of it too, was that this guy at the TSA had never really, he'd never seen anybody do this before. And he even said that he said, well, this is all new to me. And okay, but just, you know, make sure that you, you know, you use that medical exemption card so other people know you're exempt. And um, I, and from there on out, once I was in the airport, you know, I thought for sure that the, the, the stewardess on the airplane was going to give me a hard time. But all I did was flash the badge to her and walk in there with my head held high with the confidence in knowing that I was doing nothing wrong and nobody said anything to me. Um, and she did, you know, she just kind of nodded and smiled and I sat down and it was really amazing. Um, you know, so, and the thing is like, you guys, I'm not saying this is guaranteed how it'll go for everybody. I mean, obviously there's going to be different, you know, certain people want to try to exert power over you and they might be more authoritative and they might be less willing to, you know, to, to, to acquiesce to your, you know, your stance, but, but, it, but we have to try. And it's like, that's the thing I had never really tried before. And then, you know, I did, and it was like, wow, it worked. I, you know, it can be done. And um, on the way back, um, again, they did give me a little bit of a harder time on the way back. And I, I was, uh, I, I did show, have to show him my medical exemption letter and everything, but, uh, but, um, but it was, but they allowed it. They allowed me to get on and, um, you know, and it, it was, it was really amazing actually. And it just kind of, you know, solidifies in my mind, you know, this idea that it really fully does come down to just knowing what your rights are and like, and, and, and feeling confident in holding that space of personal sovereign authority over your own body that it kind of exudes something with other people where, you know, it, it, you, you put off this vibe almost where I feel like that's what it was, was that I was just, you know, carrying myself in a way that people didn't really, they didn't want to challenge me because they knew, they knew that I knew I was doing the right thing, <laughs> you know, so yeah. Yeah, so it was it was amazing, and um, it can be done. And I I do you know I do encourage other people to take a stand. Um, you know, get yourself one of those medical exemption cards, um, lanyards, and use. Wait, that. where do you get that? Um, I have them on the on my website. So um, for our rights. For your rights. For our rights. Yeah. Org. Yeah. And if you guys have questions, because this is live. Um, uh, let's see, Gretchen, Christina, Heidi. And uh, Ashley, if you guys have questions, just put them in the chat, and I'll, I'll um, as we go along, we'll we'll answer those uh, as well. So for our rights.org, you can go and get that card. Um, and what airline was this? This was on um, Southwest Airlines, which um, yeah, which I, I I have heard a couple other people say they do tend to be a little bit more lenient when it comes to that. So. Um, yeah, so, you know, and really, again, like I said, you know, it's just, it's just all about us really challenging this stuff and we, just um, gotta try. we got to try and that's, yeah. And, and, and so that will lead me into sharing uh, more about my, my travels. Cause, uh, um, I don't know if, uh, your viewers right now know or not, but, um, I am in the process right now of, um, battling a, um, criminal charges against me. And this is because I traveled back in March and I knew that I was going to be, you know, met with uh, National Guard and they were going to be trying to demand that I sign papers to agree to, to quarantine because I refuse to ever take a COVID test. I will never, I will never take the COVID test. And we have to, we have to not submit to that because that's how this continues. The way this continues is, you know, people complying with the medical tyranny. And so I put my foot down and said, no, I'm not going to do that. And, and then I also put my foot down and said, no, you don't have a right to tell me that I don't get to enjoy my constitutional right to travel freely unless I submit to your medical tyranny. And um, I was prepared ahead of time by looking at state laws that protect people's rights and, you know, looking at constitutional um, amendments that protect our rights and being ready to put these police officers at the airport, you know, on, a, on the spot. And um, I had drafted notices of liability and affidavit that I sent to the governor and I sent to um, the Department of Health and even the, uh, you know, emergency management people and to the court themselves. And basically what I did was I laid out for them that the governor, first of all, does not have any authority to actually suspend laws that have already been written for, for years. And one of those laws 
is chapter 325. And under section eight of that chapter, they, they discuss um, quarantine of people. And the only way that the state can legally and lawfully quarantine someone is if they actually obtain a, you know, medical, get a medical examination to, to prove the person is sick. And then they would have to go to a court and get um, an ex parte court order, which is like a restraining order and present that to you to let you know you need to be quarantined because you're sick and you pose a threat. And then on top of that, they're supposed to let you know that you actually have a right to contest the quarantine order and go before a judge and force the state to have to prove that you know that that you in fact are a risk to public health so there's this whole process when it comes to quarantine of people and it's it's called due process and you know and so under the under the 14th amendment of the constitution and the fourth also we we have that right to due process and that's the idea you know that if you are going to be charged with something if they're going to say that you are you know that you're guilty of something they have to you have to go through a process first right you're innocent until you can they can prove you're guilty and you're healthy until they can prove you're sick so um so i you know so i laid it all out in this aff affidavit and I, I i notified the court that i would like to um you know request my right to contest this quarantine order because i'm being told that be, just because I'm traveling and I refuse to take a test that I'm gonna be forced to quarantine. So that means there must be a court order, which I never saw. And it also means that I have a right to contest. And, um, you know, and, and they did not respond, of course. They didn't tell me one way or the other whether they were granting it to me. They just, they didn't really know how to even deal with the entire thing whatsoever. But at the airport, you know, I let the officer know that I had gone through this process and and I and when he told me that I was going to be arrested for refusing to sign to agree to the quarantine, you know, um, I, I basically turned the tables on him and I and I let him know that what he was doing was unlawful because number one, this is America. Uh, you know, he took an oath to uphold the Constitution as a police officer and he was violating his oath and that, you know, that the supreme law of the land is the Constitution and that um, by him trying to deprive me of my rights to due process and my right to freely travel and these you know, fundamental protected rights under the constitution that he was putting himself in a position of being, you know, that's a criminal act. He, it's, it's called deprivation of rights under the color of law and it is actually a criminal act and it can be punishable by up to even death if this uh, officer or, or you know, government actor is, is found to um, you know, if somebody dies in the process of, the, of, you know, violating somebody's rights, it can actually be punishable by up to death, life in prison or death. It's, so it's really serious offense. And I put him, I was prepared to serve him a notice of liability and take his badge number. And as soon as I put him in that position and exerted, you know, my authority, knowing the law, he, um, he, he said, well, you can actually refuse to sign. And, um, and at that point, everything shifted and I, re, you know, I didn't sign their papers and they actually like escorted me past all of these national guard outside and let me go. And um, it was quite an exhilarating, powerful, I mean, you know, I felt so empowered and, um, you know, I felt compelled, of course, to share this story everywhere, all over social media with everybody, because, because really it was, you know, people need to know this, like that I was definitely 100% in the right. I acted entirely within my, within my rights and that they, they are obviously breaking the law. They are the ones that are breaking the law and people need to know this. And um, I feel like um, at that point, of course, you know, they, once the state saw what I had done and they're like, wow, you know, we can't let her get away with this. They, they decided to, um, you know, to stalk me, if you will. And I was arrested not once, but twice in that 10 day period for, for violating the governor's rules on quarantine. And uh, yeah, so, um, but you know, it's what needed to be done. I was actually prepared for that to happen. I kind of, I knew I was putting myself in a position where that might happen, but ultimately these are the kind of things that need to happen in order for us to get to a place where we can bring the legal action that's gonna expose all of this for what it really is and, and, and put an end to it. So, so we're, we're, we're actually really excited because now that we have this um, criminal case, 
um, you know, for me violating the quarantine, it really does open up some opportunities for us to get information from the state that is going to, um, you know, yeah, put an end to all of this. It's really exciting. And I love that. And we had a question about what exactly mm -hmm. did you say? Like one, one thing I think you said, I don't know if it was this one, it was one of the times was you asked an officer, have you taken the oath to the constitution? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, and what did you exactly say? And is that written down anywhere that people can download these, yeah. um, these actions? Like do they yes. send this notice of liability to this place? And mm -hmm. Yes, um, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, so basically I first I asked him, this is America, right? And he just kind of laughed like, oh, like, what kind of question is that? Yeah, of course it is. And then so, so then I said, well, if this is America, then you know, uh, you know, the constitution is the supreme law of the land. And then I asked him, did you take an oath to uphold the constitution? And he, you know, he had to say yes. And that puts him in a position where he realizes that, you know, that I have the upper hand because I, I know that I have a constitutional rights that are being violated. And, you know, he didn't want, he didn't want to be in that place of liability. And so that's, that's the thing is really just exerting that and, and putting that out there. So um, on my website, also, again, you guys, if you go to uh, forrights.org, um, look under the resources tab, and there's a, there's a post there called um, Challenging Mandatory Quarantine, and I put everything in there. I, I, I shared the, the affidavit that I wrote and um, all of the steps involved in the entire process, and there's links to um, video that I did also, because I also did, um, I, I got it all on camera. That was the other thing too. I, I, I um, videotaped the entire airport experience. So you can listen word for word exactly what I said to these guys. And, um, and then I even also did another video shortly after that where I break it all down and I show people how to, you know, where to look to study the Hawaii laws, to study the, what parts of the constitution that we need to, you know, we need to reference. And so it's all there on the website um, under the post called uh, Challenging Mandatory Quarantine, and that's under the resources tab. So, and there's all kinds of good stuff there for, for whatever else um, that people need help with. I've been this morning was it's kind of crazy because I've been getting so many text messages from people now uh, and emails about, um, you know, that a lot of places are trying to say you have to either show proof of the shot or you have to submit to regular testing. And it's, it's really just, yeah, it's crazy. Like uh, so many people are freaking out. Like, what do I do? And, you know, um, I don't have, you know, the, all the answers to everything, but I will just say that, even though, you know, like one of the, one of my friends texts me and she's like, is this legal? You know, and, and I will say it's like, it's not, it's not legal. And really they have no authority, especially while, and all of this stuff is um, authorized only emergency use. They have no authority to say you have to get it, that it's mandatory. But, um, you know, but, but see, that's the thing is like, we are living in a world now where everything is just being completely run by criminals and they don't and, care. And people are complying without thinking about it. Yeah. Somebody asked what website it's for our rights.org. I put it in the chat for F O R R O U R rights, R I G H T dot org. Yeah. For our rights.org go under resources and check it out under what, what was under resources. Once you get to resources, look for challenging mandatory quarantine. Yeah. Nice. And, and is there anything on masks on that one? Um, you know, actually that would be something that I should add. I, and I, I have, I have yeah. links to okay. things that can go on there. Okay. Yes. Really good, good links. I'll, I'll send you. Okay, um, very and good. then the other thing I wanted to ask, um, uh, about that was the, uh, the jab. I mean, they cannot, they cannot mandate, mandate, mandate this. Mm -hmm. The CDC, I actually have, I'll send you guys, I'll see if we can add that onto the link as well. But the CDC, I have their whole document on um, on the on the the jab, and mm -hmm. it's on page fifty three, paragraph three. It says this vaccine cannot be mandated. It is not. You can't do it. So that is something that people can take. Um, I also have. I'll put it on the the link um, when this gets uploaded. There is something you can take to your employers, asking the employers if this is mandatory for me. Am mm -hmm. I going to be under your health insurance? Will you be a hundred percent liable if I get injured? 
So it's, the, it's, it's kind of a notice like that that asks the employer and puts them on the spot and says, you know, you, this is, you're going to, you're going to be asking me to do something to my body. Are you going to be 100% liable if anything happens? So there's that um, as well. And yeah. that is, um, that's amazing. And then what I loved is, is that calling that police officer out on reminding him, this is America and have you taken the oath yes. you know, to, to defend the, the, support the constitution? Right. And that's what the, you know, it's the scariest part about this entire agenda. It's just becoming ever more apparent that what they're trying to do is they're, they're trying to destroy America. They're trying to destroy yeah. American values, constitutional liberty, like the idea, you know, that we actually have rights. And it's just this, you know, this global communist takeover to, yeah, to remove people's individual sovereignty and to even remove you know, so sovereign, you know, countries from the picture and, and, and really move us into this new world order, this one world government. It's, it's really crazy. And, uh, you know, um, but yeah, going back to um, the, uh, the demands now for this regular testing, I just wanted to point out too, because I think that might be Heidi that I was talking to by text earlier that's joined us. But um, and I know that her daughter's school, I think, is, is saying that if you don't have the, the shot, that you have to get regular testing. And I, I think the best way to handle this would actually be to, number one, we need to point out to them that the new um, guidance from the CDC that just came forward um, shows that they are, they, are re they are recalling the PCR test. They are saying that come December, they should not use this test anymore because they, they, it does not differentiate between COVID and the flu. And they openly admit that and that we should be using a test that can differentiate between the two. And so come December, they're going to stop the use of it. But why on earth would they be waiting until December? If, yeah. You know, it's... it's yeah, it's crazy. And so like, so we know, right, you know, right there, straight from the CDC, right from the horse's mouth, this thing is not accurate. And so for that reason alone, you can, you know, you can use that to um, argue against this mandatory testing um, and, and, and ask them, you know, how are we to know that what this test is showing is actually accurate? Like, you know, that's, that's something that we should have a right to, to know that it's going to be an accurate reading that you're get that you're getting. So there's that aspect, um, and there's also, um, you know, there's also actually tons of research around, you know, the flaws in the in the PCR test and how it um, it yeah. should, yeah, it should have never been used for any of this. It's all a big scam. I have also I have a notice of liability that I think uh, we created uh, modeled after the one that you had for businesses um, mm -hmm. to send to schools. That, that literally sa says kind of the same thing as the employers, yeah. where is my child, you know, first, do not give my child anything without my consent. Mm -hmm. And so, and then second, you know, um, if, you know, I decide to do the jab will, through your school, because my child needs to go to school, will your school be 100% liable for any health injuries? So there's notice of, there's notices of that that you can send to your school mm -hmm. um, that we have as well. So I need to get those out. Somewhere. Yeah, I was going to say another thing, too, that actually another um, uh, thing that we might want to focus in on is um, is claiming a religious exemption from all of this stuff, whether it's the mask, the test, the, the shot. We you know, the religious exemption is probably really your best bet at this point. And one of the reasons I'm going to say that is because of the fact that we've been going we keep going back to this whole oh well it's only authorized under emergency use only so you, you can't mandate it well guess what they're about to make all of this stuff a license by the fda it's going to be approved here within a month and so we are going to um yeah we're going to need to to, to kind of shift our um our fights um to a different place where i think that ultimately claiming a religious exemption is the most important thing that you know that can help in all of this and so for a religious exemption, um, you know, basically uh, you don't even need to have any specific like, you know, religion that you're that you're saying this violate. You can have just a strong ethical or moral, you know, conviction against something and that can be considered valid for a religious exemption. It can be something as simple as that you believe that you know, that um, God's, you know, said the body is the temple and that you don't want to harm your body. Um, the testing itself actually has graphene oxide and ethylene oxide 
and that can cause cancer. And so like you have a right to protect, you know, what gets put into your body. So, um, yeah. So, uh, she's asking about, um, for the religious exemption. Um, what, yeah, they, see, and that's the thing. They do have a right to ask you to kind of, to clarify your, you know, your religious exemption, but there, there are, um, there are, uh, like um in the in the bible actually if you wanted to reference the bible there's certain you know passages from the bible you could use um but ultimately they don't have a right to say that your religious belief is not valid you know what i mean whether no matter what what way you want to approach it um and i know that peggy hall has actually done a lot of um help for people when it comes to putting together religious exemption so um, she might be, uh, that's something that I want to try to work on getting on my website to um, help with that, you know, uh, actual letters that people can submit. But, um, but I think a lot of places will already have a religious exemption form that you can fill out. So um, yeah. Oh, they're testing even the vaccinated kids too. That's crazy. Um, wow. Yeah, that is, that's wild, you know, that they would, and that just goes to show, that just goes to show right there that um, if, if this shot actually works, right, then why would they need to be worried about, you know, whether or not the, those who got it are, might be positive, right? It's just, it's crazy to even think that anybody would um, trust this thing and want to get it when it's, it's proving to not have any real effect on the overall cases and numbers and whether or not you're you're gonna get it or not it's just like it's just beyond me wow but, yeah um i just had a deja vu which is actually okay. a really good thing so <laughs> that's pretty weird but the religious exemption and they're talking about parker school in the chat um saying that parker school is asking about uh, saying that a leader a spiritual leader needs to write off on a, on a spiritual exemption that's that's not true. That's a spiritual exemption is your own personal, a uh, religious, sorry, religious exemption is your own personal. Um, like, what would you say? What would you say to that? Uh, Levon, if some, if a school was like, well, we need to have your religious leader sign off on your religious exemption. Right. I know. Um, you know, in that sense, I would, I would say that, um, you know, that uh, I don't think you actually do need to have, you can have, like I said, you can just hold a strong moral or ethical conviction against something. You don't have to belong to any kind of church. You don't have to have some kind of, you know, pastor or leader. Um, but they're saying, they're saying it does. That's interesting. Um, well, yeah. You know what too, though? I think it's, I think it's also, it's like, they don't know. Uh, <clears throat> again, this goes back to people just wanting control. And trying mm -hmm. to say, oh, well, you you know, you can't say that you're religiously exempt without proof. It's like, no, I can because this is America, and I get to I get to say what you know. I have I have certain personal rights, yeah. and so it's like there. That's again going over control. So this lady, like at the office, says that you have to have a spiritual church leader. I would I would I would argue against that. I would say no, I don't. That's mm -hmm. not right. You know, yeah. I am religiously, and again, standing in your sovereign truth. Um, Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes, the person yeah. says I'm the religious and spiritual leader of my house. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. That's okay. Standing in your sovereign truth and telling her, mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah, that's, that's where we're at right now. It's really everybody's choice and everything is choice. Everything is choice right now. So it's really standing in your own sovereign being and making a stand for what you know to be true for yourself. And, you know, it's so. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's the beauty about America and our religious liberties. And again, it's the First Amendment for a reason. It's very important. And that is that, you know, that we can hold, we, we are entitled to hold our own beliefs about, uh, you know, whether, whatever it might be. And, um, and you don't need some, you know, you don't need a pastor or some, you know, some leader, like, like you said, just let them know that you are the religious or spiritual and, and leader then, in your home. Um, and then I would, I would also, I'd put it back on them and I would say, Show me the rule, right? Where the, the actually the law mm -hmm. that says I need a spiritual leader to sign off on this. I would like to see the law, the American mm -hmm. law that says I need a spiritual leader on this. Not what you're saying, you know. Right. But that's that's where I would put it back. And if you and if you can't show me that, then you are legally discriminating against my religious rights. Exactly. That yeah. 
And that makes me think of um, going back to the mask issue too, when you're, you know, like, cause for example, I had, uh, I had an incident at, at a Ross store and the, the manager was trying to tell me that, um, you know, that she, she, I, I even offered to show her my medical exemption and she's like, I don't care. We don't take that. You have to wear a mask in here. That's our store policy. And she's like, it's the law. And I told her it is not the law. I would like for you to show me the law. If it's the law, show me, show me what statute, show me where it says. And um, of course she couldn't come up with anything. And, you know, and she says, well, you can, you can talk to KPD about it. And if I had time, I would have stuck around and had her, you know, call them to talk to them to, you know, to, to have another opportunity to educate the police also. But, uh, but yeah, if they're going to try and say you have to do something a certain way, um, or, you know, it's the law, then put it back on them and say, show me, show me where, you know, you have the, th- the authority to, mm-hmm. to deprive me of my rights and tell me I don't get to breathe or that my child yeah. doesn't get to have an education. You know, it's, yeah. And, and also tell them, you're saying, I see this uh, says, these are the things to require to enroll. Uh, no, there's, they, they are, um, that's discrimination. Mm-hmm. That's again, it goes back to discrimination. So they, they can just say, I can choose to unenroll. Well, you can say you are discriminating against my, my rights. My, this is, you know, and uh, there is a notice of liability that you can send to that school. And this is, you know, this is, it's like, this stuff is not easy right now. Each one of us is, is, is needing to step up and speak our truth and stand in our sovereignty. And it's not fun and it's not mm-hmm. easy, uh, but we can do this. And that, it just takes like one like Lavana person to just try, just try, go to that Parker school and say, show me the law where it says a religious leader needs to sign off on this. And if you do not allow me to enroll my child, you are discriminating against me so i'm putting you on notice right now that this is my right to enroll my child in a public school it's not private and um that's 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 exactly what i would be doing with that and it's not going to be easy but it's also not a mistake that you are in that situation i think each one of us is is here doing what is our kuleana to do and it's not yeah. fun. None of this is fun, you know? So the pro- yeah, the problem though that I, with Parker school is they, they are a private school and that oh, they is are private. Yeah, they are a private school. So that is probably the one thing we run into trouble with whenever we're dealing with a, you know, a, a private school, it's, it's, it's a different story, but it's still, it's still, you know, you, you're, you're basically, we also have, um, we also have actually there's Supreme Court precedent that that we have a fundamental right to an education. I mean, they might say, yeah, you can you can have your right to an education somewhere else. But, you know, but it's worth worth it for us to challenge to challenge these uh, private schools and um, and still make them understand, you know, that they are violating fundamental constitutional liberties and um, and that they're discriminating, that they are being discriminatory. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, in, but generally speaking, for other schools, too, that's something that I just wanted to throw out there, that there is Supreme Court precedent. It's um, Brown versus the Board of Education, if you want to look, up, look it up, and that, you know, that they have determined that, that the, right to, the equal right to an education is considered a fundamental constitutional right. Yeah. And so to be told, you know, that you don't get to have an education or in-person learning unless you get this shot or submit to their, you know, testing is just insane. It's, it's really insane. This world we're living in today. I just, it's mind blowing. And, you know, yeah. And the last thing I'll just say on that too, is that it is kind of getting to a point where, you know, like we might just really have to take our kids out of these schools Um, you know, forget going to universities, Um, you know, we just might have to start really creating our own communities where we can find people that have certain things they can offer, you know, and for trade and, um, you know, just find this close knit community of people that that respect our rights that we know we can go to without having to get this thing and without having to wear a mask and, you know, and start supporting each other and just, you know, create our own kind of private world where we operate you know um outside of this insanity because i mean it's just yeah yeah. it seems like that's where this is heading 
I totally, I totally agree with you. So um, it just says iPhone. It doesn't say who, what, what your name is, who's talking about, about this. What I, what I would do, the other thing too, that's, that I feel that is happening right now, um, licensed teacher in the state of Hawaii. So that's awesome with a master's in education. Yeah, well, we can totally, like there are Hawaii freedom schools that are being created right now. And I know one is on the big island, one's on Oahu. Um, I don't know where other ones are. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure they could be created by, by different teachers and stuff. So we would definitely need you, uh, the teacher. And so please send us your contact information. Uh, you can email me or, or Lavana, Lavana for your rights or go to forourrights.org. And uh, Jennifer from Mau, from Oahu is actually setting up the Hawaii Freedom Schools and all of the content um, and, and stuff like that. So we would definitely need your help. So please uh, contact us around that. Um, the other thing I want to share around this is that, is that um, this is not a mistake, like I've said, and us getting grounded and getting into nature is super, super important and following our heart, trusting our intuition. Because that, that's where this is all headed. Like, I know this is a scary thing, and it seems like, you know, the world is, is going to hell in a handbasket and what's happening. But I truly feel that God has a plan. The, the, she has got this. Like, we have won this. We have won already. We just have to follow, especially the w women, especially the female energy right now. We have to follow our intuition, doing what we know is right. Like, Lavana, who's a single mom. Like, what was your occupation or what is your occupation, Lavana? I, I'm a hairstylist. I'm just, I just do a hair part-time now because I'm like full-time activist. But yeah, I, I know. And I just, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I knew I was going to figure it out. So I brought, you know, I brought my own lawsuit against the mass with, you know, up against the governor and the state of Hawaii. And I've gotten a lot of help along the way, but that's the thing. I just reached out. I found help. I did, I did whatever had to be done. I figured it out along the way. I figured out how to, you know, to, to create this for our rights nonprofit and keep it functioning. And we've grown now. And, you know, now we're the, we're actually the Hawaii chapter of make Americans free again, which is a nationwide movement. And I was going to mention too that Pam Popper offers free help for all members of Make Americans Free Again when it comes to homeschooling. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to just pull their kids out to, you know, she's going to be offering Zoom lessons and you just have to be a member. That's it. It's totally free. free. So you can, yeah, just uh, put your name in at uh, Make America, uh, or actually go to hawaiistandsup.org if you're in Hawaii, because then that connects you to my database too, so that we can give you more specific help. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it, it can be done and, you know, we are just one person, but, you know, we got to find that, that, uh, that power inside ourselves to be brave and stand up and reach out to those around us. Because, you know, when we do, we come together, um, that's where we can find, you know, the strength to, to, to figure this out when we, when we come together, it's unity is so important in all of this, of course. Yeah. So. And I was going to mention that too, uh, the person who's talking about Parker school, Check in with other parents and see if they're also concerned. And then you all can write letters to Parker School together because right. unity is really the power. So um, mm -hmm. if you haven't signed up for the Hawaii Freedom Actions, um, you can go to tinyurl, tiny, T-I-N-Y-U-R-L dot com forward slash Hawaii Petition. Hawaii Petition, I'll put that in the chat. But tinyurl dot com forward slash Hawaii Petition. I, we have over a thousand um, people on that petition now, and I send out freedom actions at least once or twice a week where all of us are contacting the governor for one specific message, contacting the health department, contacting the board of education, you know, and I give you just little templates that you can model and then, but just, you know, with the contact information, making it really easy. So if you are, if you are at Parker school, contact other parents and see who else is thinking this is absolutely ludicrous. And then all of you guys contact the school, contact the principal, send your letters of, of notice of liability. Um, and, and because that's where we're the strongest is, is together, is a unity. And maybe they'll want to take their kids out too. And then you have a freedom school uh, right. right there. So, so that's, and it's, this is going to look different. Our world is not going back. It's like people are going, oh, I'll just take the jab so that things can go back to normal. They're not going back it's to normal. Never, they will yeah. never, ever go back to normal again. 
No, exactly. They have a plan for this, yeah, for us, and it's not going to ever be like it was before. They want to move us into this new world, you know, this technocratic dictatorship type of world where everything is digital. They want, they want all of our data in one central digital, you know, application where everywhere you go, you just scan a QR code. It's, it's crazy. And, and they're using the disguise of a so-called pandemic to, to move us closer to that. And, um, and the other thing about it too, this whole Delta variant stuff, you know, is just a bunch of nonsense because there is no way for them, not only can they not differentiate the flu from COVID, they have no way to determine if it, what kind of variant it might be either. It's just all complete lies. It's total, you know, speculation or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, the thing that I, with the, with the Parker schools, that's really important, I would say is definitely honing in on the fact that the, the PCR test is a fraud and, um, you know, and that the inventor himself even said that and that, you know, that it should not be used for any diagnosis. So how can, you know, how can they justify using something like that to try to, you know, to try to, you know, um, maintain control over this so-called virus when it, it doesn't determine if that's what you're actually, you know, infected with? Um, in fact, it doesn't even determine if you're carrying any infection yeah. of anything at all. Like you can have dead yeah. viral particles give you a positive reading and that's what they call asymptomatic, you know? And yeah, so yeah. it's, it's crazy. And I love that the CDC has already has said, we're going to stop using this. I mean, it's shocking that it's until December, but no. at least they said it, at least they said it. So that's, that's ammunition that, that you guys have for schools. The yeah. CDC even says this doesn't work. There's also, um, there's also a, uh, a document oh, that parents have taken their keikis or their children's um, masks and had them tested. I have that PDF. It's a PDF that shows the, um, the bacteria in the masks and none of it's even virus related. It's uh, bacteria pneumonia and different, different things like that. So if you guys want that, I have, a, I have, um, I do have a URL for that, but I can't remember what it is right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, there's a lot of ammunition you have. Totally. I, I also want to just point out and let everybody know it's kind of exciting news. Um, like I totally decided that I am, I am going to fight back against this mask, uh, the mask issue with our children big time because it's total child abuse. We know that the benefit, there is no benefit and there is a lot of risk involved in masking our children. So I put together um, a, a big notice of liability that has all of the data. It's got tons and tons of links to all of the studies, including that one where the parents sent the, 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 the masks to the lab and found 11 different pathogens on it. And, um, and so I, I submitted this notice of liability to um, Josh Green, the governor, the Department of Health, uh, BOE, DOE, and I basically put them on notice that you guys have 30 days to respond and explain to me how any of this makes any sense and how you have the legal authority to continue to do this. And if they don't, you know, if they don't cease and desist, basically, then I'm going to file civil and possibly criminal complaints against them for child abuse, for, for, for endangering our children. And, um, but that is a good document that has lots of good information and links that you can use with your school principal or teacher, um, you know, to share with other parents. We just got to like start getting the conversation going and putting yeah. this data in front of their faces, you know, that the, the Journal of American Medicine, Pediatrics, they did a study um, that, you know, shows that excess carbon dioxide is, 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 you know, leading to serious problems for our children when yeah. they're wearing these masks for extended amount of time in school. So um, we know that we know they're at risk and they're, it's causing harm and it really needs to, it needs to stop. So that could be really helpful for people too. Um, yeah. And is that on your website? Is that on yeah, so website? That, Yes, that is. Um, if you go to the homepage, just go to forwardrights.org and scroll down and you'll see it's the latest post that's right on the front page there. And it's um, unmask our Keiki and the entire well, that resources when it's, when it's done on the front homepage, will that be in the resources? Yeah. Eventually I'm going to move that over to resources. Yeah. Unmask our Keiki. Okay. Yeah. So check that out for our rights.org at the homepage is at the bottom. Yeah. Um, just roll unmask. down and you'll see unmask our Keiki. Okay, yeah. cool. And we're going to, we're going to keep working on just doing whatever we can. Like um, we're going to do info cards um, with all of this, you know, the, the scientific data that we can share with other parents and teachers and, 
Um, and we are going to get some yard signs so that people can. Yeah, you know, those yeah, are coming. Yeah, and we'll have a landing page on maskarkeki.org. So we're going to really, yeah, just keep pushing back against the, the masks on our children in the schools because I think, you know, with everything that's going on, there's so many different battles, but it's it, sometimes it's better if we just break it down and we're going to like focus on one thing at a time. But but we do have, yeah, we do have a lot of work to still do because they're going to they're gonna be approving this shot for the kids under 12. And it's crazy. Well, I just can't even imagine. I, I, it's, it's mind boggling. Um, so yeah. let's just tell everybody, I know you have your, we just have a few minutes left. Uh, mm -hmm. If any questions, uh, chat or just unmute yourself. <laughs> I'll just let you guys in. Um, also, Lavana, let's update everybody on what's happening with the latest lawsuit, your lawsuit, which is totally amazing. Uh, yeah. that, that one. Oh, I love that one because that one you'll be able to ask for them to show proof that there's right. even an emergency, but that's not happening until December. Right. But what is the, 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 the appeals, right. um, lawsuit is this month, right? Yeah. So, okay. So the, the most current thing that's happening is we finally are getting to a point where our state case that's been in appeal is going to be finally decided on within about a month or so. Um, and we finally just got our last reply brief put in. And so now it's just a matter of the judges looking at it and deciding if they're going to actually uphold the law or not and, uh, you know, maintain their, their oath to the constitution. So we have to pray that they do the right thing. And ultimately when you look at it and I will post the most recent reply brief on our website soon, so everybody can read it. But, um, Basically, though, we are we are 100% correct when it comes to the law and the fact that, you know, that the governor does not get to just be a dictator for as long as he wants to claim there's an emergency. That's totally unconstitutional. It violates, you know, the separation of powers doctrine of our state constitution and, you know, the national constitution, because that is what the definition of tyranny is, is when all the power is, you know, in the hands of one person or one branch of government, then we don't have that typical checks and balances like we are supposed to. And so we are saying that the reason why our legislature wrote into law that there would be a 60 day time limit on an emergency declaration is to prevent that sort of thing from happening because there should be a limitation on how much emergency power a governor gets to have. There is absolutely no reason why, even if there was a true emergency and it went on more than 60 days, there's no reason why we can't have the legislature reconvene for a special session so they can, re they can write laws to allow us to continue to deal with the, with the emergency beyond that point, you know. So we're excited that we're going to hopefully win this one. And if we do, that would mean all the emergency orders are completely null and void and they'd have to be stopped. The mask mandate would be over. All of this would be done. And um, so I, I, well, I, it, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen, though, because I won't be surprised if, I, if they try to find a way to sidestep all of it and, you know, still, you know, impose these, these things on us one way or another. But um, but we're, we're going to, you know, pray for the best outcome on that. And, um, yeah. And then I'll just, yeah. And then I'll just finish by saying too, that, um, all of the buzz I've been, I've gotten this link like, uh, 20 times today from everybody that that guy in Canada who, um, you know, just had a huge win over there and he, he was able to force their hand he, because he demanded that they show proof True. that SARS-CoV-2 actually exists. And it was because they brought charges against him and he was being fined $1,200 for, you know, whatever violation, you know, to the emergency order. So um, the exciting thing is, is that basically that is exactly the same thing that is happening for me in my criminal charges. So we're at that point now where because the state is uh, pressing charges against me and claiming, you know, that I'm a criminal, then, uh, you know, that they are in a position where they have the burden of proof is on them. And we are asking in our discovery, uh, we are making requests that they provide us with proof of the existence of the, you know, that the, that the virus was isolated. Um, we're asking for, you know, all the details about the use of the PCR test and how many cycles they are using in order to get a positive reading and all of that stuff that is going to, you know, break down this entire illusion of 
you know, that, and that's the thing, if they can't actually on paper prove that it even exists, how can they have the authority to have any kind of mandates or rules or regulations based on that? So, yeah, so super exciting that this is basically the same thing that we're doing with my criminal case. And we are, we're moving forward. We got Thomas Renz on the case um, as co-counsel, which is super amazing. He's, he's an American hero uh, attorney that's brought all these big lawsuits and I'm so fortunate to be connected with him through Make Americans Free Again. So we're going to get there, guys. That Yeah, her lawsuit's not until December, but when is the appeal? It's this month, right? Um, So I believe it's going to probably be decided within 30 days. So it will be towards the end of this month or very early September. That's, that's, uh, we haven't got a specific date just yet, but it's usually about 30 days from the time that the reply brief is due. Um, And I I will say... (laughs) that the um the criminal case the trial actually might even be november 21st um i was saying de- december but it might be as soon as november 21st because it was originally set for september 21st and then we asked for a 60 day extension to give us time to get this information from the state so it sucks that it takes time but that's you know that's part of the process it, you, unfortunately we have to we have to, yeah, we have to give them some time to get this stuff, you know, together. So it's going to be good in the long run, though. We, I feel really, really hopeful about all of this, you guys. It's just, oh, it's all awesome. my part. Mm-hmm. Thank you so but much. Yeah. And Maria, I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't have time to put it out to the entire list because that takes me a, a while because I actually put that from my personal email so it doesn't go to spam. But anyway... Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so it'll go on my YouTube channel and I'll send, I'll send out the link to everybody. I'll personally send it to you. Uh, and yeah, so any last questions, you guys? And then I want to just do a quick little, just a quick little prayer, uh, to just ground us and drop us all in, especially since we're all, um, we have all the, the feminine energy going on right now, which is a lot of, this is what is shifting. It's, we are shifting the whole planet the whole world from masculine energy to feminine which is love and which is connection which is unity so let's remember that so let's just go ahead and close your eyes and take a deep breath exhale with a sigh just Mm. let loose anything any stress fear worry from your body right now and again take a big 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 deep breath inhale exhale make some noise just let your body release any stress any tension the body is conscious it knows itself, it is, it is aware, it runs you, your heart has been beating since before you were born. Take a big deep breath, inhale, last one, exhale with a sigh, mm. letting go of any stress, any worry, any fear, and feel that your heart rate is, your heart is beating right now without a to-do list on your part. It is pumping a gallon of blood through your body per minute. Without a to-do list, you're not plugged into the wall, you have no batteries, You just took a breath. Your body is going back to its natural rhythm of breath. Your body is literally running itself. And that consciousness that is running its, that consciousness that is running your body, that awareness is moving the sun across the sky, is growing the plants in the soil, the soil that is pressing against the seeds that is making that pressure against the seeds in the ground that is darkness in the ground is literally that seed knows how to grow to the light and there is a knowingness within you that knows how to grow to the light how to bring in the light it is already within you so placing a hand on your heart or your hands on your heart And sending yourself compassion and understanding because only you know what you have gone through these last 17 months, 18 months. Only you really understand what has been your journey. So send yourself some compassion and understanding right now. That it's okay to be you right here, right now, and that you are safe. In this present moment, you are taken care of. And that something within inside of you knows your next step. And it will come into your heart first. And as you ground and release any fear, which 
In the Bible, it says 365 times, do not fear, fear not, one for every day. God, universe, source, whatever you want to believe your higher power is, has this. And it has it through you, through your kuleana. So ground in the knowingness that you are right where you need to be. You are going through exactly what you signed up for in this lifetime. And you have everything you need to grow to the light, to bring the light back into your life with your family, with your children, with your keiki. So breathe into the knowingness that you are always safe. Breathe into the knowingness that the light is here, that she has not abandoned us, that she will never abandon us. So breathe into this amazing body, breathing itself, billions of processes happening in, your, in every cell of your body right here, right now, and you just are sitting in stillness. That's how much you're taken care of. That's how much you're loved. Taking a deep breath. When you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Lavana, thank you so much for joining. And everyone else, this will be on YouTube and um, forourrights.org. Check it out. We've got yes. this, everyone. No fear. We have got this. Stand in your sovereignty. It's all going to be okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Michelle. You guys have a great day. All right. Aloha. Aloha.